Hey guys, welcome to my channel, J Rock Yoga, and I'm Jess. Today, by the end of this video, you're gonna have three to five tips on how to improve your bakasana or crow pose. So if you wanna learn how to do that, just keep watching. Okay, so before we jump into the actual tutorial, um, I would love to have you have your wrists warmed up and have your shoulders warmed up, maybe a short vinyasa flow. Um, just so we're not going into it super cold. If that's something that you're not sure how to do, I do have two of those videos on my channel and I'll link them below. Really short, good information. Um, and then I'd also love to have you warm up the core a little bit. So just so we're not going into it cold. Um, and once you do that, let's jump in. Okay, so the first tip that I teach all of my students is the spider fingers trick. <laughs> so um, what you want to think of your hands as, you're going to spread them really wide when you come down into your bakasana. And not only spreading the fingers wide, but gripping into the finger pads. So when we grip into the finger pads, we create kind of like a steering wheel. So if you're falling a little bit too forward in crow, you can press into the fingertips and that'll take you a little bit back. And if you're falling kind of backwards, like you're going to always fall on your bum, then you could press into the heels of the palms and that's going to send you a little bit more forward. So we can think of our hands as not just our base, but really our vantage point or our steering wheel. Okay, the second thing that is very, very important is turning on the lats and the wrapping of the biceps so that our shoulders are strong and stable and they're ready to hold our weight. So <clears throat> when you put your hands out like this, almost like you're pressing on a wall in front of you, your shoulders naturally move forward. Imagine pressing into that wall so that the shoulders move back and down away from the ears. So if you're pressing into the wall, the shoulders are going forward and then drawing them back and away as you're pressing with the hands. And then think about your bicep rotating internally and up. And as you do that, it's just almost like you're opening two pickle jars outwardly. The hands don't move, it's just the biceps. Once you open those jars, you're gonna feel your lats turn on. And a lot of us yogis hold our tension up in our neck and our upper traps because there's a lot of pushing action. So in order to really turn on the entire shoulder girdle and have the lats pulled down um, and take the tension away from your upper trapezius, we're gonna wanna push away that wall and then wrap the biceps up, wrapping the armpits down and in. You can even put your hand right beneath your armpit and once you wrap that bicep, you're gonna feel the lat pull down and pull in. Once we have our spider fingers and our strong shoulders, we're gonna think about where the energy is moving in our body. So in an arm balance, we're lifting in and up. You want to think about pulling in the core. So not only are we kind of cinching the waist in and up, you're gonna even have a slight rounding of the spine and rounding of the shoulders, rounding of the core because it's not all the shoulder's job and the wrist job to hold you up into this pose. The other parts of your body have to do work too. So you have to think about once you're stable, you're pulling the energy in and you're pulling the energy up. Okay, fourth tip. The fourth tip is stacking of the knees instead of squeezing of the knees. Um, a lot of people I find, they will come into this posture and they'll start with their knees really wide and they're like, oh, okay, we're here, you know, and then they're kind of going forward. It's not that you can't do it that way, but I like to start training really good habits uh, from the beginning. So if you're learning your crow and you're trying to get it, why not start in a little bit, you know, more strong position. So you're gonna plant the hands and you're gonna stack the knees. So instead of drawing the knees out and around, you're going to press down to pull up and stack the knees on the triceps. At first, this may seem much harder, but over time, this works that internal pull and rounding in the core 
so that you can really work on your core strength and you can really work on your shoulder strength. Whereas here, you're relying completely on the shoulder girdle and just the balance. Whereas if you're really stacking the knees, you're building core strength and you're building that internal muscle memory for any other inversions that you may want to work through to pull in and to pull up. The last tip that I think is so simple, but most of us don't think about is where you're looking in the pose. So when we get into our crow, a lot of people are gonna be looking down because they're like, oh, okay, here are my hands. This is where I'm pressing away from. But what we want to do is actually look forward because our crow pose in the energy, we're pulling the energy in and up. It's an arm balance. It's a lifted posture. So if we're looking down, we're gonna go down. We're gonna roll forward. We're gonna have our shoulders slam into the mat, which I've done a million times. Um, but if we look forward gently, that lengthens the neck and it tells our brains that we wanna be up and not down toward the floor. So those are your five tips. Let's put them all together. Okay, we're gonna start with the spider fingers. So come to your mat, place your hands shoulder width apart, spreading finger bones as wide as you can. And then before we go anywhere, really grip into the finger pads. Notice how if you lean forward, you can press into the fingers and kind of press yourself back. And if you lean back, you can press into the heels of the palms. Then we're gonna think about pressing the ground away, just like we press the wall away, and wrapping the biceps forward and up. You're gonna feel that hug right around your rib cage, right beneath the armpits. And then pull the energy in and up, coming to the tippy toes, and stack the knees as high as you can on the triceps. Check in, press the ground away, wrap the armpits in, and then next is gaze forward. Once you gaze forward, slowly just lift the toes and come into your crow. There you have it. So I hope this video helps you achieve all of your crow and Vakasana balancing goals. If you liked it, give it a like below, comment on what you liked, uh, comment on what you would like to see more of from me. If you want to follow me on social media, my Instagram handle is jrockyoga and my website is jrockyoga.com. Thank you so much for watching and if you really liked it, subscribe. All right, come back. We'll have new content every week. I really appreciate you.